Just shooting the 18. He got shot out. Nice and easy. He's not going to get there. Denny Hamlin across the line. The checkered flag is in the air. Both first 11, Denny Hamlin and the 18 of Kyle Busch have been DQ'd. The final results have been changed. Handing the win to Chase Elliott. Hey, race fans, it is the preview show delivered by DoorDash. I'm Kim Kuhn alongside Alan Cavana in Studio 3. And things, well, they're going to get a little tricky this weekend for the NASCAR Cup Series. Yeah, I'm trying to fold my car here into a triangle. Oh. Into a triangle. That's where we're going. The Where's tricky, turn four? Well, yeah, there's no turn four. <laughs> I don't know what's on here, but the tricky triangle of Pocono. There's only the big three turns. It's so unique. It's such a different track on the schedule. So maybe a surprise winner. Maybe we could see something different this weekend. Okay, if we don't see something different, who has had a good record at Pocono that we should watch? Good news for the Toyota fans because they've won seven of the last 10 last weekend in New Hampshire. Just a dominant performance from Martin Truex Jr. So I'll say this, Toyota's got the mo, the okay. momentum, right? But when I look at the scorecard, it still shows me 12 Chevy wins this year to Toyota's six. Toyota still has some work to do. So they have to use this momentum that they go into a track that they know they have a good record at. They have to get the win this week if they want to measure up more to those Chevys. Okay, we're talking Toyota. I'm looking at Tyler Reddick. Oh. He was able to get good finishes there in the Chevrolet. Now we know the recent history of Toyota, their strength there. I think the combo of Tyler Reddick in a Toyota at Pocono is going to be a great combination. He could be successful this weekend. And I know it said Chase Elliott won there last year, but let's not forget who crossed the finish line first. It was a Toyota of Denny Hamlin, a second place to Kyle Busch, then in the Toyota. So we know that they are fast. They just have to bring that again this year. Well, you mentioned the seven recent wins by Toyota. Four of those seven wins came from Kyle Busch, oh. but he's no longer in a Toyota. He's now in a Chevrolet. So what are we expecting from KB? I expect him to bring that talent just to the eight team now, as he's been doing all year. A little inconsistent. That's my only worry with Kyle Busch. He's going to be great at Pocono. He's going to have the speed there, but he's got to get the finish, right? It seems like this year he's either in the winner's circle or finishing 30th or worse. You don't want the 30th or worse, right? You want that consistency, especially when we're pushing toward the playoff and, and for that championship run. I want to see a little more consistency from Kyle Busch, but he's got the talent and he's got the car and the speed. I agree. Kyle Busch, it's been feast or famine this season. That DNF in New Hampshire, yes. that frustration we've seen in the past, though, frustration can work in favor of Kyle Busch, lead him, get him motivated, or it can just kind of snowball. So which Kyle Busch is it going to be? I think we're going to see a solid day for him. I wouldn't say a win, but a top five finish. He is so good at Pocono, and for a long time he wasn't. But then something clicked, he's figured it out. I think we see a top five from the number eight car. He remembered he's Kyle Busch and he can he just is. do anything, he can right? Do anything. There you go. A guy that we're not so sure can do Ooh. anything these days, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott. Let's go to the scorecard, our oh. Chase Tracker. Kim, it shows he is 60 points below the elimination line. You know what that means? He worked all day in New Hampshire, didn't make up any ground. Imagine going to work all day and not making up any ground. You got nothing to show for it. That's what he has going in now to Pocono. 60 points out with six races left. I have officially switched camps. Chase Elliott needs a win. He is must win now. I was in the win camp the entire <laughs> time. I'm sorry, I didn't have faith. The nine fans can yell at me. But I see a lot of similarities from this past weekend in New Hampshire and Pocono for Chase. He talked about New Hampshire not being a track he felt very good at, despite having a runner up finish last year. Same thing with Pocono. He says it's a track he hasn't really figured out. He's not confident like he is at other tracks, so much so that he's running the Xfinity race on Saturday wow. to get some extra seat time. So. I just think it's a no-go. It's a poke no for Chase Elliott this weekend. But we still have races left for the playoff start. So where are you looking that he could win? Good. And Must has to win, likely. Watkins Glen has to be on there. You know, his couple wins there. So good at road courses. Another one in the Indy road course that he's never won at. He's never won a road course race in the next-gen car. Oh, so I'm worried point. about that, but Watkins Glen, if not if it's not Pocono, you know, we're running out of shots here. Daytona, always a possibility. I'm watching Watkins Glen. I'm also watching Michigan. They okay, can a lot speed of speed. There, so All right. we'll I'm see. just worried about Chase Elliott's speed in terms of last year's Chase Elliott can make up 60 points in six races so fast. The 2020 championship year can definitely do it. This year's nine team can barely crack the top 10. 
I don't get it, Kim. All right, well, each week we look back at a NASCAR 75 flashback. Where are we headed in the time machine this week? Let's go back to 2010 <laughs> at Pocono. What a race this was, memorable for many reasons. One of them, this incident between Kevin Harvick in the 29 car and Joey Logano in the 20 car. Two laps to go, Kevin Harvick gets into Logano. It leads to the famous line about who really wears the fire suit in the Harvick family. We all remember that. That incident sent the race into overtime. Denny Hamlin would get the win after this big crash that nearly sent Casey Kane airborne. An eventful day at the Tricky Triangle. Always good racing up there. I think we see it again this weekend. And I hope Kevin Harvick brings that same fire this weekend in his last start at Pocono Raceway. You don't want to miss it. It's the highpoint.com 400 this Sunday, July 23rd, 2.30 p.m. Eastern on USA. And join us right back here next week for the preview show delivered by DoorDash. She's Kim. I'm Alan. We'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.